The sports world is shocked mm -hmm. by the sudden death of renowned soccer journalist Grant Wall. Wall was at the World Cup when he collapsed during the final minutes of the quarterfinal match between Argentina and the Netherlands. Wall felt ill last week and just one day prior to his death said he had a case of bronchitis. It was a shock to so many and joining us right now is Grant Wall's friend and colleague, co-host of the Football uh, with Grant Wall podcast, Chris Whittingham. Chris, good to see you and sorry for uh, being with you under these circumstances. Thank you for having me, and uh, good afternoon. Of course. Uh, how are you doing first, uh, and especially where were you when you learned about his death? Yeah, I was, uh, I was in my apartment, um, and I was actually waiting to podcast with Grant. Uh, we were due to recap the game that he was at and unfortunately passed that, and it was an incredible day of football, Brazil and Croatia and Argentina and the, Nether and the Netherlands that day. It was an incredible day, and I actually had sent him a text saying, uh, what... What time are you ready to record it? It was very late in Qatar. It was going to be like 2 or 3 a.m. We had made a regular routine of it, but I was waiting to talk to him, and then uh, word started to filter through. And, Chris, again, you spoke to him on Thursday, uh, the day before he passed. Did he sound unwell, and, and how surprised were you about his sudden passing? Well, I mean, stunned. Uh, you never expect that. Yeah, I mean, he had, he had talked about, and, and you mentioned the bronchitis and, and mentioned uh, the illness he had had during his time in Qatar, and it, it just sort of felt routine. It felt like something that he had talked about as being a regular part of covering tournament soccer, where you go and you cover something every day and you're up until 2 or 3 a.m. and you're writing the next day and podcasting and you're going around a city and it all seemed relatively normal. He, he said he was sick, but I mean, we spoke for an hour and he's like, oh, excuse my cough, excuse my voice, but I, I never heard anything that would suggest that um, something so tragic was not far away. And Chris, that makes it all the more shocking that you just had spoken with him. And he didn't just cover the action on the field, but also the important stories surrounding the game. He was very critical of the conditions of migrant workers in Qatar. And he also reported on his experience of being detained while attempting to wear that rainbow shirt in support of LGBTQ rights into a World Cup venue. So tell us about the important work he was also doing surrounding the World Cup, not just on the field. Yeah, I think it's important to stress that it wasn't critical for the sake of being critical. He had actually been to Qatar a few months before the tournament began and didn't just go there with the intent of, I'm going to you know, criticize this government and criticize these people who are organizing the event. I'm going to find the stories of people who worked in Qatar, worked at these hotels, worked at uh, the, the stadiums and were part of the organization of this event and actually got some positive stories. It wasn't purely with the intent of trying to find people who would criticize the Qatari government. But yeah, he was dogged about trying to tell the stories of the game, even to a country where in some ways part of your responsibility, not, not responsibility, but part of what you'd want to do is grow a sport that's not as popular as American football, basketball, baseball, hockey. And you don't always tend to criticize these things whenever you want them to grow. And yet Grant was insistent. If I'm going to cover this properly, like a proper sport, that I've got to cover the good and the bad as any journalist would in any other sport or in any other area of journalism. He was definitely a well-respected journalist there. Uh, in a tweet about Grant, you called him needlessly kind. And you wrote this. He tweeted, uh, treated me rather with a level of respect that I didn't deserve. Uh, can you share some personal recollections of Grant's kindness? Yeah, well, I mean, I can just sort of start by saying the origins of us working together are a testament to that. Um, we began working together despite the fact that we had never met in person before. I sent him a message uh, in May of 2020, which obviously was during uh, COVID isolation times. I had just lost a job and I reached out to him asking if he needed any help producing his podcast. And without almost a second thought, he said yes. And over time, I came to be on, I, I came to have a speaking role on his podcast, which I wasn't expecting. I think for your viewers that might not know, Grant is the titan of this industry. He had probably the biggest platform and the most reach. And so the idea that he would let me, someone who had I, I've worked some in the game and, and I have some credentials, but not nearly the credentials that Grant did, um, was kind of amazing. We were due to do a podcast together covering the U.S. Uh, in their run through World Cup qualifying with Landon Donovan, one of the all-time great American soccer players. And I asked Grant two days before we started, hey, am I going to be on this? And he's like, yeah, of course. You're, 
you're going to be on this. You're you're a part of this. You're important to me, and your voice is important. And uh, he he did that kind of stuff all the time. But even in talking to other people, um, that kindness that kindness just bleeds through. Like you hear, I've heard stories from a hundred people in the last couple of days of, hey, he just randomly reached out to me and congratulated and congratulated me on the work that I was doing and congratulated me on on growing in my career despite the fact that I barely knew him. So. That's just the kind of person he was. A uh, legacy that he leaves behind. Uh, thank you very much. Again, co-host of the Football with Grant Wall podcast, uh, Chris Whittingham, and our condolences are with you and all of those who have been impacted by his death. Good to see you. We know he left behind a wife, uh, mm -hmm. two dogs, and obviously a lot of family and friends. So our thoughts with all of them as well. Yeah, especially when there's a sudden death, when it was something that you didn't expect. You know? What a career and legacy he's leaving behind. Incredible. All right. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.